Hi guys. Okay. This is going to be a little project I'm doing. I wanted to share with you right quick on a percussion revolver. Now, this is the trigger guard for my 6.2 Pocket Navy, which, as you know, the Pocket Navy is simply the 49 Pocket model scaled up to be 36, but all the action frame and etc. is for the 49 Pocket model, which was originally a 31. Well, many people complain about how the mainspring is a little weak, and as you remember, when I first got mine, the actual orifices of the um, nipples was too big, and there was so much back pressure coming back out through it that it was actually blowing caps. I mean, every shot was a cap jam, period. And it was blowing cap debris all the way back down into the action where the trigger is at. It was so jamming it up. And so I, to fix that, I changed out the nipples and went to the um, Tresco nipples, which I like. I know a lot of people like the slit shots, and they're very nice nipples. However, for me, I like the Trescos. It's just personal preference. And so I've got like 90% of it there. But one of the things that's causing it is weak mainspring. The mainspring sets off caps fine, but upon firing, there's so much back pressure coming back, the actual hammer will raise up just a little bit. So I'm wanting to increase my spring tension just a little. One or two more pounds is all. And there are several ways to do it. Now, if you will look right here, there's a gap. I can loosen this screw and put some sort of spacer in there down here at the base of it to cause the spring to stand up just a bit more. But I noticed when I was looking at doing this, if you'll notice the angle right here of where the actual spring attaches, let us say that, that angle is like this, okay? It's actually just a little bit like that. And that reduces the, the tension of the spring because it's not true vertical. So what I'm thinking of doing is not at the top, but at the bottom, taking a little bit off of the frame and cause that to kind of extenuate it a little more like that to force that spring to clamp down and go up. Now, you cannot take off but just a few strokes with a file. So I'm going to take a file and see what I can do. But what I'm going to do is that, that heavy part right there where this actually attaches. Now, you cannot change the angle a great deal because the screw would have to move. So if I want to make that spring go from here to here, I'd really have to change that screw hole direction. We're not doing that. I'm just going to take a few thousandths off of this. I'm going to take the spring off and then in the lower part of it, because as you can see, it's solid from right there to right there. And you'll see this up close in a moment. Where the actual screw hole is down to the end, I'm just going to take one or two strokes off of it. This will be concealed with inside the rear grip frame, so she'll not even see I did it. But to test how well this is going to work, I began by taking a uh, business card, and I stuck it up there on it, and I marked where the main spring is right now. So, I'm going to set this up in the vise in just a second. You're going to get to see that. And I'm going to take about 10 strokes off of that soft brass with a mill bastard file to change that angle just slightly. Then I'm going to re-tighten down my mainspring, and then I'm going to come up here and put my mark that I've already made up on there and see if it has raised that tip up. What I'm looking for here is for it to go up like the thickness of a penny. Something like that. If it'll do that, I've added one or two pounds to my spring tension because I've changed that angle. I don't want to go too far here. I could break the main spring. If I make it too severe, it means that spring is going to bend way too much. Another thing you need to be aware of is these smaller springs that go into these pocket models, they're stamped out like the others, but they sometimes are not cleaned up. Mine had a wire edge. You do not want a wire edge on a spring. That gives it to work, to crack, to split, to break. And you get mainspring failure. You always want the edge of a spring to be rounded. So if you take out your spring, and like on mine, you feel on the bottom side, and there's this wire edge, you need to take a file and gently round that off. Remove that wire edge, 
Don't thin the side of the spring any. Just remove any wire edge so it's got no place to go because metal is a lot like cookie dough. Okay? The thinner it gets, the bigger the danger for a crack to form. And once a crack forms, it just runs. The fibers will just tear and split. So a spring under tension will just go bang and that's it. But if it's rounded, it will flex. And so we want to eliminate any of those wire edges or sharp edges made in the manufacturer. Okay, let me hook it up into the thing and let's see what we can get right quick. Okay, now I have taken the spring off of my trigger guard and I've checked it up in this little hand vise where I can get a hold of it better. And as you can see, here's that flat area we were talking about where the spring attaches and here's the screw hole. This back third is where I'm going to take a couple of strokes off of the file because I can look at it and tell it's not exactly straight. It's actually kind of on an angle. So all I'm going to do is just take my file and take a couple of thousandths off there. And you can see your work pretty easy because that dull metal will suddenly start shining when you take a little off. Okay, now you can see, I believe, that shiny section now, as opposed to the other section. And now let me go this way to make sure that bottom is not burred up like that. There was a little bit of a burr there from where it had been tapped at the factory, so I'm wondering if that was changing my angle a little bit. Now let me remount and put it up again, see if it changed location. See if I rose that spring up and added tension. Okay. Now as a demonstration, I did get it to move, but I wanted to show you how thin a difference we're making. That's one of those really thin paper clips. And I put it in between, right on top of the screw, between that and thing to pinch, to bring it up. The bottom line is the original mark. The top line is the mark I got by just filing. And then this current mark right here, let's see how, oh, this way. Do this upside down and backwards so you can see. See, it's above that top mark right now with that. That bottom mark was my original starting point. The top mark is where I just finished it to. And then I stuck this in there just to see how much more I can move it up. So that tiny little wire will do that. Now a thin shim of a Coke can can be enough to do this. You want something flat and fairly wide so it does not. I would not want to use a piece of that wire of that because it might snap the spring because it's putting too much focus pressure. I want spread not flat. I want flat not, not focus, excuse me. So something round could do this. But I had never tried this and just thought it might be a way to shim it up a little bit. So now where it touches it's now touching the top of that line so i have rose it up the thickness between those two lines that should have added one or two pounds of tension to that spring without risking anything it's still everything's good now when i put it back together it'd be a slightly harder to cock but that's what i want i want it to hold that hammer tight so that when it fires i've reduced the back pressure coming back but now i want to add just a little bit more hammer spraying pressure to hold it just a little snugger. I'm getting maybe one cap jam out of 25, 30, 40 shots. And usually it's just an unlucky cap, splits funny, and it comes out and sticks. It doesn't fall off the nipple because I've deburred the hammer face, but it's coming back and it's getting between the frame and that. So I'm wanting to add just a grunt more pressure to hold it a little flatter. And I think that'll do it. It's one of them fine-tuned little things. Now, let me reassemble it, and we'll see how it rotates. Okay. I can tell you straight up, it's much firmer. Definitely. It feels like it went up two or three pounds in pull tension. Cocking it before was kind of like click. Now, it's click. Not hard. Don't get me wrong. But it's definitely, and the click is much more definitive 
when it locks in place. So, dry fire, nothing in it, be ready. A very decisive crack. And it definitely has more tension here. Before, it was very easy to rock this. I'd say it's doubled as far as tension because it, it was where you could just lightly bump it and it'd rock up. Now it's not. And it's because I changed that angle a little bit and made that spring come back just a little bit. There's nothing in there, no other shim. It's simply that. But I wanted to deeper it and change that angle slightly from true vertical to like that. If it was a clock and straight up was 12 o'clock, I moved it over to about like 12.15, maybe 12.30 at the most. It's not even that. But it's just enough. Like you saw on that card I measured, it's about the thickness of a dime. The, the, the spring came up, but that implies additional tension. Now, will it snap? I don't think so because it's held bottom at the top and it's just flexing it a little more securely. And I deburred my spring, so I don't have that danger of it splitting. But it is definitely firmer. And so that means that now I can take it back to range and see how it does. And that'll be the next video we do is me taking it out there and giving it a shred. So, this is one of the middle of the night ideas that pops into Blackie's head to improve a percussion revolver. So, part one here is, can I make that spring a little stronger without having to resort to shims? Part two will be, will it now not, will it not allow so much back pressure and fill in this area in the hammer with a lot of fouling? I've changed the nipples. That reduced it by like 90%. Guys, I mean, it was ridiculous. I would fire, um, I wouldn't get through all five shots without a gap jam. It just forget it. It wasn't going to happen. And usually after 10 shots, that had become so caked up that ignition became kind of antsy because the hammer was soft landing on all the fouling in there. It's like it lifted the hammer up and I would have to take and scrub it out in here and clean it out in that slot because it was just so much fouling. So I'm trying to reduce that fouling with this model. Okay. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like button for me before you go. And in part two, coming up real soon, we will talk about and take this to range. And let's see how it does now that I made the little improvement. Till next time, guys. I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.